The James Webb Space Telescope has just picked up a 1 million gigawatt energy pulse. So powerful, it outshines anything we've ever recorded. Its source? A silent interstellar object known as 3I slash Atlas. The beam is focused, deliberate, and heading straight toward Earth. This isn't background noise, this could be contact. The unexpected signal. In April 2025, during what was supposed to be a routine calibration scan, the James Webb Space Telescope caught something no one expected, a faint flicker in a part of the sky known for its silence. The signal was so subtle, it almost escaped notice. At first, scientists chalked it up to instrument noise, maybe a cosmic ray or a processing error. But this was no error. The flicker didn't just appear on one sensor. It showed up across three of Webb's main instruments, MIRI, NIR-CAM, and NIR-SPEC. That alone was strange. These instruments were designed to capture infrared light with such precision that any overlap is incredibly rare, unless the event is real. So, researchers looked closer. They cleaned the data, recalibrated the frame, and removed known interference. That's when it became clear. The flicker wasn't random. It was a beam of energy, concentrated and sharp, pulsing at regular intervals. Then came the numbers. The energy output was calculated at over 1 million gigawatts. That's not just a big number. It's around 40 times more energy than what the entire planet Earth generates at any given moment. And yet, this beam wasn't diffused like a solar flare or scattered like a gamma burst. It was coherent, like a laser stretched across space. The shock hit quickly. This wasn't just power, it was precision. A focused signal of that scale doesn't occur by accident. Seasoned astronomers, many who've spent decades waiting for anomalies like this, fell silent. As one astrophysicist quietly put it, space doesn't just throw darts, this one had a target. What was even more stunning was what happened next. The signal persisted. It wasn't just a one-off flash, it pulsed again and again. And soon, analysts began asking the question that had been quietly forming in everyone's mind. Where did it come from? That search would lead straight to one of the strangest objects humanity has ever observed, a mysterious interstellar traveler named 3i slash Atlas. Origin traced to 3i slash Atlas. Once the signal was confirmed, scientists traced its source using Doppler shift analysis, measuring how light changed as the beam moved through space. The result was unexpected. It pointed to a known object. 3i slash Atlas. First spotted years ago, 3i slash Atlas was labeled as an interstellar comet. It was quiet, cold, and barely visible. No tail, no reflection, just a dark shape moving silently across the sky. It had passed through our system unnoticed, until now. Webb's data revealed that the beam of energy originated near this object and was aimed directly at Earth. More than that, 3i slash Atlas wasn't drifting like debris. It moved with smooth, steady, intentional motion, like it was navigating through space. A cold, lifeless rock had just become something else entirely, an active anomaly. As one mission lead put it, it's like finding out your old car in the garage suddenly drove itself to your front door. The scientific world reeled. Was this object emitting the signal? And if so, was it natural, or was someone, or something, trying to get our attention? Before theories could settle, it happened again. The signal repeated, three times, and science was no longer dealing with a one-off mystery. What followed would challenge the foundations of modern physics. Real, repeatable, and unprecedented. To confirm the signal wasn't a mistake, scientists ran every possible check. Over 16 independent audits ruled out bugs, cosmic rays, and system errors. The verdict? The beam was real. Then. In a span of 72 minutes, it repeated itself three times. Same structure, same strength, same precision. This kind of pattern doesn't happen by accident. Stranger still, no other telescope could see it. Not Hubble, not any ground-based observatory. Only James Webb, with its unmatched infrared sensitivity, could detect it. The object's thermal signature was zero, not cold, but absent, as if it wasn't part of space at all. It didn't emit heat, light, or radiation. It was like a hole in reality, only visible with the right instrument at the right moment. And the timing? Chilling. The object only moved after we looked, as though it had been waiting. 
As one engineer said, it's not just that we saw it, it's that it responded to being seen. The evidence pointed to something real, but whether it was natural or technological was still unknown. Natural event or a violation of physics. When something doesn't fit the rule book, scientists first assume the rule book is fine. They just missed a page. So the first theories aim to explain the signal naturally. Maybe a magnet or flare, maybe gravitational lensing from a star behind Proxima. After all, space is full of strange and violent things. But none of those explanations held up. The signal was too focused, its structure too precise. Natural forces tend to scatter energy, not deliver it in a clean, repeatable beam aimed directly at Earth. And then came the motion analysis. By measuring its displacement using parallax, scientists realized the object wasn't just moving, it was doing something that should be impossible. It was clocked at over 340,000 kilometers per second, about 13% faster than the speed of light. That's not just fast, that's forbidden. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, nothing with mass can exceed the speed of light. To do so would require infinite energy and would break the very fabric of time. Past and future would collapse. Cause and effect would lose meaning. And yet, the data was there. Every test showed the same thing. No calibration errors, no software bugs, no misreadings. The object really did move faster than light and left no gravitational disturbance, no radiation trail, no thermal footprint. It was as if the object wasn't moving through space, but was moving around it. As one physicist admitted, if this isn't a mistake, then our understanding of reality just took a punch to the face. Now the question wasn't just about what the signal was, it was about what could create it. Something this fast, this silent, and this powerful couldn't be natural. And if it wasn't natural, it might be technological. Signs of deliberate technology. At this point, the real question wasn't if the signal was unusual, it was how anything could have created it. A beam of over 1 million gigawatts, perfectly focused across space, points to something far beyond natural causes. Some scientists suggested planet-scale technology, like Dyson swarms, theoretical megastructures that harvest energy from stars. Others proposed the signal wasn't a message at all, but propulsion exhaust, evidence of a starship decelerating using fusion or antimatter engines. In that case, Earth wasn't the target, it was just in the way. Then came the pattern. The beam pulsed every 11.2 seconds, and hidden in that timing were prime numbers, two, three, five, seven. These don't appear in nature, they appear in codes. Intelligence counts, nature doesn't. But what shook researchers most was the response. When Webb shifted its viewing angle, the next pulse delayed by exactly 12.4 milliseconds, the precise amount needed for the signal to compensate. This wasn't just a signal, it was interactive. As one analyst said, it's like shining a flashlight at the sky and something blinks back. Whatever it was, it wasn't just pulsing, it was aware, the object that shouldn't exist. When Webb zoomed in on the source of the signal, what it found made no sense. The object wasn't just dark, it seemed to erase light. No glow, no reflection, no heat. It wasn't a black hole, but something worse. A presence defined by absence. Behind it, starlight twisted unnaturally. Gravity usually bends light in arcs, but this distortion looked more like spirals, like space itself had been knotted, and it moved. Not like a comet or drifting debris, it didn't spin, didn't slow, and showed no resistance. It moved in a perfect straight line, as if space wasn't even there. For over six hours, it stayed on course, until it suddenly turned. By exactly 0.19 radians, it realigned, not randomly, but directly toward Webb's position. It adjusted to our gaze. And yet, there was still no heat, no sound, no radio signal. Just that same faint pulse, repeating in space-time. One scientist summed it up best. It's not just that it moves. It moves like it knows it's being watched. If that's true, then it had been waiting for us. And it only moved once we had the power to see it. A sensor, a signal, or a watcher. By now, the theories had shifted from science to something deeper. Philosophy mixed with fear. Was the object transmitting? Was it traveling? Or was it simply watching? 
Some scientists began to rethink the nature of the object itself. What if this wasn't a spacecraft or a flare or a probe, but a sensor? A piece of technology left behind long ago, not to communicate, but to observe. A silent guardian, or worse, a silent witness, waiting until a civilization was capable of noticing it. Its lack of heat, its perfect motion, the way it responded only when Webb looked directly at it, it all pointed to one chilling possibility. This was never meant to be seen. And the moment it was, it responded. If this was some kind of post-biological technology, it wouldn't emit normal signals. It wouldn't announce itself. It would remain dormant, buried in the background noise of the universe, until something, like James Webb, looked in just the right way. Some theoretical physicists took it further. What if the object isn't even a structure in the usual sense? What if it's a function? Something embedded not in space, but in the rules of reality itself. An automated process that changes space-time where it appears. Not a machine, but a kind of software of the universe, activating only under the right conditions. And if that's true, then it may have already started running. As one researcher speculated, maybe it's not here to talk, Maybe it's here to listen, or worse, maybe it's here to measure. These ideas were hard to swallow, but as natural explanations fell apart, what remained were options that forced us to reconsider what intelligence even looks like. And while scientists wrestled with equations, the world outside had already caught wind of the discovery, and it was panicking. Global reaction and philosophical crisis. The signal leaked before the science could catch up. Within hours, headlines erupted. Web detects million gigawatt signal. Faster than light object responding to us. Social media exploded. Hashtags like hash, Atlas Beacon, and hash web watcher trended worldwide. For many, it was a dream fulfilled. For others, it felt like a warning. We've been noticed. Governments scrambled. Some urged caution. Others went silent, fueling rumors of classified briefings and emergency protocols. The UN quietly prepared for something never attempted, an official session on extraterrestrial contact. But the bigger shift was internal. In classrooms, kids asked, are aliens real? In churches, priests and imams asked how this fit into faith. Scientists argued, artists painted, philosophers posted. The idea that Earth is alone, that we are the center, began to crumble. As one philosopher tweeted, we weren't the first to speak, we were the first to hear. The world was no longer debating if the signal was real. It was asking what to do next. Do we answer or stay silent? Because this wasn't just a scientific mystery anymore. It was a mirror, forcing us to look at who we are and who we might become. Preparing Earth for Interstellar Dialogue. If the beam from 3i slash Atlas was intentional, then Earth isn't just being observed, it's being spoken to. This changes everything. Until now, our world has lived under the assumption that if intelligent life existed elsewhere, it was too far, too faint, or simply uninterested. But the trajectory of the signal, its power, its structure, it all points to something with knowledge of us. That knowledge may not be recent. From the surface of 3i slash Atlas, or whatever controls it, Earth has been visible for millions of years. Our oxygen atmosphere, Methane trails and biosignatures have been lighting up space like a cosmic billboard. If something was watching, it would have known we were here long before we knew they were there. And now we're close enough, fast enough, and smart enough to hear them. Four to 12 light years. That's not centuries. That's a conversation within a human lifetime. A message sent from there would arrive in four years. A response from us would be back in another four. That's close enough to speak in dialogue, not echoes. Which brings us to the dilemma, do we answer? Space agencies across the globe have started planning contingencies, ranging from signal triangulation to deploying autonomous probes to complete radio silence. There's talk of building dedicated reply infrastructure, something akin to a planetary scale ham radio, if we choose to use it. But scientists aren't the only ones debating. Ethicists, linguists, diplomats, and even artists have joined the discussion. Who writes the message? Who speaks for Earth? What language do we use and what truths do we share? Because once a message is sent, it cannot be taken back. As one senior SETI advisor put it, this isn't science fiction anymore. It's protocol and we don't have one. This moment, this decision, 
how to respond, or whether to respond at all, may define the next thousand years of human history. And yet, even if we stay silent, the signal has already changed us. Beyond Truth, Legacy of the Signal Whether this signal turns out to be artificial or natural, whether it's a message or a mistake, it no longer matters in the same way, because it's already done something extraordinary. It's made seven billion people look up at the same sky with the same question. Are we alone? If the signal is real, if it's truly contact, then this is the moment. The moment humanity joins a larger conversation. The moment we realize we're not the main characters. We're just part of the cast. If it's not contact, if it's natural, misunderstood, or the result of some undiscovered cosmic trick, then the lesson is just as powerful. We're not done discovering. The universe still holds surprises we haven't dreamed of. Funding for telescopes has already surged. Universities are reporting spikes in applications to astronomy, physics, and planetary science. Young minds are shifting their focus from jobs to missions, from careers to purpose. The entire scientific frontier just opened wider. And through it all, one truth remains. We heard something, something that shook us, that made us question the laws of reality, that made us feel like, for once, the universe was not silent. As one web team member wrote in their mission log, we don't know what we've found, but now we know where to listen. That may be the most powerful legacy of all, because even if this wasn't the first message or the clearest one, it was the loudest. And now we are listening. Whether it's a message, a mistake, or something we were never meant to see, Webb's detection has changed everything. 3i slash Atlas is no longer just an object. It's a question pointed directly at us. And now that the universe has spoken, there's only one thing left to ask. What will we say back?